Hi friends, uh, it's Chupaklitz and uh, now we are going to discuss IS-37 provisions, contingent liabilities and contingent assets. So let's start from liabilities. Liabilities are entities present obligations resulting from past transactions or events, the settlement of which is expected to result in an outflow from the company of resources involving economic benefits. A liability may only be recognized when it can be measured with sufficient reliability and when it is probable that the outflow of benefits will actually occur. Provisions Provision is a liability of uncertain timing or amount. The following conditions should be met to recognize provision. The entity must have a present obligation, legal or constructive, as a result of past event. It must be probable that an outflow of resources embodying economic benefits will be required to settle the obligation. A reliable estimate can be made of the amount of the obligation. Let's go to next slide. Oh, let's discuss about legal and constructive. So, legal obligation can be contractual obligation, uh, which, uh, uh, which occurs as a result of contract signed by authorized representatives, obligation uh, as a result of legal requirements, laws, regulations, that's also a legal obligation, constructive obligation, it comes uh, from company's own actions. A constructive obligation arising, uh, arises when there is an established pattern of past practice, published policies or current statements indicating that the company will perform certain tasks or accept certain responsibilities regardless of whether there is a legal requirement to do so. Let's go to the next slide. So, meaning of probable. Probable means more likely than not. Hence, in order to recognize a provision, the probability of the outflow needs to be more than 50%. The standard states that making a reliable estimate will almost always be possible when the company can determine a range of feasible outcomes. The following double entries are made to recognize the provision. Debit provision expense, credit liabilities. So, let's go to the next slide. Specific provisions. There are also specific types of provisions which are excluded from the scope of IS 37 and covered in detail in other standards. IS 12 income taxes, IS 19 employee benefits, IFRS for insurance contracts, IFRS 9 financial instruments. Uh, what must be disclosed? Keep in mind that the amount recognized as a provision should be the best estimate of the expenditure required to settle the present obligation at the end of the reporting period. IS 37 requires sufficient information to be disclosed in the notes of the financial statements to enable users to understand the provisions booked. Brief, so what must be included? Brief description of nature, expected timing and uncertainties surrounding the underlying obligations. The opening and closing balances of the provision, movements in the period including the use of the provision against actual payments. Contingencies. So, what, uh, what is contingent asset? Contingent asset is a possible asset that arises from past events whose existence will be confirmed only by the occurrence or non-occurrence of one or more uncertain future events not wholly within the control of the entity. So, and what is also a contingent liabilities? Con a contingent liability is a possible obligation depending on whether some uncertain future event occurs. Uh, it is a present obligation, but payment is not probable or the amount cannot be measured reliable. 
Once a contingent liability is disclosed or recognized, the reporting entity is required to monitor the relevant facts and circumstances on a continuous basis. So, and a very important term, likelihood. Virtually certain is the highest degree of probability. Probable is more likely than not. Possible means that the chance that an event will occur is, is less than the chance that it will not occur. Remote is the lowest possible degree of probability. IAS 37 doesn't provide any specific values for the above levels of likelihood. So, uh, we know that IAS 37 doesn't provide uh, any guidance in respect of uh, likelihood traits, uh, but uh, uh, that's uh, an example uh, which can be used as a basis uh, for uh, definition of remote, possible, probable, virtually certain likelihood. So, remote, uh, that's usually from uh, 0 uh, to 4.99%. Uh, and if uh, the likelihood of an asset or liability is remote, uh, then no disclosure is needed for both asset and liability. Uh, as you can see, possible, that's between 5 and 50%. Uh, there is no need to disclose any asset if the likelihood is possible, but you need to disclose liability in the notes uh, to financial statements. Uh, also, you can see here, uh, if probable, that's between uh, 50 and 94.99%, uh, and in such case you need to disclose asset and you need to recognize a liability if uh, the likelihood is probable. And if uh, likelihood is higher than 95%, that's virtually, virtually certain, uh, 95 uh, to 100%, then you need to recognize both asset and both liability. So, specific provisions. Future operating losses. In respect of future operating losses, no provision can be recognized and uh, also uh, one rose contract, contracts. One rose contract is a contract in which cost to complete the contract are higher than benefits from the contract. A provision should be created at the point when the contract becomes one rose. So, in respect of future operating losses, no provisions. In respect of one rose contracts, a provision should be created at the point when the contract becomes one rose. Provision should be made for the net amount of loss from the contract, costs minus benefits. So, provision should be made, that's important, for the amount of loss from the contract. So, if we uh, predict that our uh, contract uh, will uh, be loss-making, then in respect of such loss, we need to make a provision. When, disc uh, when, discontinu when discounting, I'm sorry, when discounting the future costs expected under one rose contract, the increase in time leads to increase in the discounted amount, uh, the, unwinding, the unwinding discount, which is recorded as follows: debit finance costs, credit provision. Also, restructuring provisions. Let's talk about them. Uh, restructuring is a course of actions that is planned and controlled uh, by management and materially changes either the scope of the business undertaken by the company or the way in which the business is conducted. Examples of restructuring activities are sale or termination of line of business, closure of business location or relocation of business activities, changes in management structure. IAS 37 allows for provisions to be recognized in respect of restructuring activities, but this is only possible if the following conditions are met. Detailed formal plan of the restructuring exists. Such plan must be announced to those who will be affected by its implementation. 
a restructuring provision may only be created in respect of expenditure directly associated with the planned restructuring and may not include any costs which are associated with the ongoing activities of the firm. So, and also, we need to talk about environmental provisions. These provisions are required in respect of future environmental costs in case a relevant legal or constructive obligation exists. For example, legal obligation for the site restoration activities. Warranty provisions. A suitable provision should be recognized at the time of sale because sale is definitely in many cases the event that gives rise to the obligation. Companies usually analyze their past experience in order to determine number of claims which could be made by customers, number of faulty items between those which were sold, costs to repair or replace faulty items. And let's look through one a simple example. Uh, so, the Fluffy Kitten, our entity Fluffy Kitten, is involved in two big projects. After the completion of each of these projects, there will be a harmful effect for the environment. Cleanup costs will be approximately six million dollars for the first project, for the first project, I'm sorry, and seven million for the second. There is no law in respect of environmental damage in this in that country. Uh, however, Fluffy Kitten has a strict environmental policy published in it, on its website, which states that they will clean up any environmental damage. In this case, should a provision be made? Uh, yes, of course, in this case, the provision should be made in the amount of whole 13 million, 6 million for the first project and 7 million for the second project because there is a constructive obligation uh, which occurs uh, because uh, our entity Fluffy Kitten has a strict environmental policy. So they need to make a provision in respect of uh, uh, cleaning, clean, cleaning, up any, uh, cleaning up the environmental damage caused by their activities. So they need to make a pro provision for both 6 million and 7 million and which gives us a provision of 30 million. Oh, I'm sorry, not 30, 13 million. Sorry my, for my pronunciation. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, we are close to the end of this video. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, thank you uh, also for your letters. Uh, I have received several and basically the idea of this video is uh, uh, and this video is a result of one of your letters and also uh, continue to learn, continue to read articles, improve your knowledge, improve your skills, don't give up, level up, level up your knowledge and your skills and uh, see you in next video.